you don't arrive at this moment by accident. You're here because something inside you already knew before the words formed, before the logic caught up, that reality isn't what you were told, that the solidity you've trusted your whole life is a carefully maintained illusion, a shared dream held together by collective agreement and sensory habit. But beneath that surface, vibrating in the silence between thoughts, in the pause between breaths, lies the raw fabric of existence, a luminous field of pure potential, infinite and unformed, waiting not to be discovered, but to be chosen. And you, not as a separate you, but as awareness itself, are the one doing the choosing. Every time you look, every time you feel, every time you even wonder, you collapse that potential into a single thread of experience, not because you're controlling it with willpower, but because your very presence, your act of witnessing, is the cosmic trigger that says, let this be real for now. This isn't theory. It's the bedrock of quantum mechanics confirmed in labs for over a century. The double slit experiment doesn't just show particles acting like waves when unobserved. It reveals that observation itself is the switch between possibility and fact. When no one is watching, an electron isn't here or there. It's everywhere it could be all at once, a ghostly symphony of maybes. But the moment a measurement happens, the moment information becomes accessible to consciousness, the wave collapses instantly, irreversibly. One path is selected. One version of reality crystallizes. And that's not just for electrons. That's for everything. Your coffee cup, the sky, your own heartbeat. All of it emerges from a haze of quantum potential. The instant your awareness touches it, you think you're seeing what's already there. You're not. You're co-authoring what becomes there. And here's where your mind starts to resist. Not because it's wrong, but because it's protective. Your brain evolved to believe in a stable, external world because that belief kept your ancestors alive. If the ground might vanish when you stop looking, survival becomes impossible. So the brain built walls, thick neural circuits that say, the world is solid. You are small, things happen to you. But those walls are made of outdated code. Quantum physics has already torn that code apart. Reality isn't external, it's relational. It doesn't exist in isolation. It exists in relation to you. And that changes your role from passive victim to active participant, not in some New Age fantasy of manifesting Ferraris, but in the most fundamental, scientifically valid sense, your attention shapes the texture of your lived experience. When you fixate on lack, you're not just noticing scarcity, you're collapsing a version of reality, where scarcity is amplified, reinforced, made tangible. When you shift into wonder, watching raindrops trace paths down a window, feeling the warmth of sunlight on your skin without labeling it, you're not escaping. You're tuning into a higher resolution frequency of the quantum field, one where beauty, connection, and synchronicity aren't flukes. They're the default. This is why ancient sages sat in silence for decades. They weren't waiting for enlightenment to strike them from above. They were ceasing to collapse the old world. In stillness, the noise of conditioned observation fades. The habitual scanning for threat, for lack, for separation, it quiets. And in that quiet, the field reorganizes. New possibilities, ones your anxious mind never allowed into focus, rise to the surface. That's not magic, that's quantum biology. Your nervous system, your DNA, even your mitochondria respond to the quality of your attention. Stress collapses a reality of constriction, inflammation, isolation. Presence collapses a reality of coherence, flow, interconnection. You've felt this. Remember that time you were lost in awe, maybe under stars, maybe holding someone you love, and for a moment, time dissolved. That wasn't just emotion. That was your biology sinking with the uncollapsed field. You weren't in reality. You were reality, awake, aware, and undivided. But the classical mind hates this truth. It clings to separation because separation gives it identity. I am me. And that is the world feels safer than I am the world looking back at itself. So it fights back with five predictable resistances and recognizing them is your liberation. 
First, intellectual dismissal. Oh, that's just the Copenhagen interpretation. But the math doesn't care about interpretations. Every experiment, from quantum erasers to delayed choice, setups, confirms that observation, retroactively shapes what has already happened. You can change the past by changing how you observe it now. Second, compartmentalization. Quantum weirdness only applies to tiny particles. But everything is made of particles. Your body, your thoughts, your screen, all quantum systems. Decoherence makes superposition hard to see at human scale. But it doesn't eliminate it. It just means the collapse happens faster, smoother, more seamlessly, unlike a movie frame. Changing so quickly, you think it's one continuous image. Third, solipsism panic. Does this mean I'm the only real thing? No, you're one node in a vast network of conscious observers. Others are collapsing their own realities. And through quantum entanglement, that mysterious link where particles share fate. Across distance, your collapses sync with theirs. That's why we share a consistent world. Not because it's objectively out there, but because we're all tuning into overlapping frequencies of the same field. Fourth, blame avoidance. If I collapse reality, then my suffering is my fault. Not true. Most collapse is unconscious, shaped by trauma. Culture, biology, the collective field. You're not responsible for every outcome, but you participate in the probability landscape. And participation means you can shift your angle of observation, not to blame yourself for the storm, but to learn how to sail within it. Fifth, existential vertigo. If nothing is solid, what can I trust? You can trust the awareness that's noticing the uncertainty. That's the one constant. The silent witness beneath the waves of form. The ground isn't under you. It is you. So how do you live this? Not by trying to control every collapse. That's ego in disguise. But by cultivating observation quality. Start small. Before you open your eyes in the morning, pause. Feel the darkness behind your lids. Not as absence but as pure potential. Then open them and notice the room doesn't appear. It collapses into focus through your gaze. That's not poetry, that's physics. Do it with sound. Before turning on music, sit in silence and sense. The space where sound could be, a field of vibrations waiting to be selected. Then press play and feel how your attention shapes which notes you hear, which emotions they stir. Try it with choice, before picking a path, left or right, yes or no. Linger in the space of both and. Feel the branching timelines as living possibilities. Then choose and watch how that one thread becomes your reality, while the others fade back into the field. This isn't imagination. This is training your nervous system to feel the quantum process in real time. And here's the revelation that changes everything. Your emotions aren't reactions. Their broadcast signals, every feeling, joy, fear, grief, or emits a frequency that ripples through the quantum field, shaping which probabilities become most likely to collapse into your experience. Anger doesn't just color your perception, it literally increases the odds of encountering conflict. Gratitude doesn't just make you feel good, it amplifies coherence, drawing in synchronicities that align with that frequency. This is why two people can stand in the same room and experience completely different realities. Not because one is positive and the other negative, but because their emotional broadcasts are tuning into different layers of the probability field. You've seen this. Think of a time you were radiating confidence, maybe after a win, a deep meditation, and suddenly opportunities flowed, strangers smiled, doors opened. That wasn't luck. That was your emotional frequency collapsing a reality where abundance was the dominant pattern. But don't confuse this with toxic positivity. Quantum participation isn't about suppressing pain. It's about witnessing it without fusing. When grief arises, don't say, I am sad. Say, sadness is moving through awareness. That tiny shift from identity to observation keeps you from collapsing a reality where sadness is permanent. You allow the wave to pass through you, not define you. 
and in that allowance, new possibilities emerge. The field isn't loyal to your story, it's loyal to your vibration. So if you're stuck in a loop of lack, it's not because the universe is withholding, it's because your emotional broadcast is locked on a frequency of contraction and the field, ever faithful, reflects that back as experience. The way out isn't to fake joy, it's to find one true point of coherence, a memory of love, a sensation of breath, a sliver of beauty in the chaos. Anchor there, let that frequency grow, and watch how reality gently reorganizes around it. This is the secret the mystics whispered and the physicists proved. Consciousness isn't in the universe. Consciousness is the universe becoming aware of itself. You're not a drop in the ocean. You're the ocean tasting its own salt. Every thought you think, every choice you make, every moment you truly see, you're not just experiencing reality. You're giving it shape. And that means your power isn't in controlling outcomes. It's in choosing your angle of attention. When you walk into a room of conflict, you can collapse a reality of enemies. Or you can look for the shared humanity beneath the noise and collapse a reality of connection. Same room, same people. Different observation, different world. This is why your presence matters more than your performance. Why being matters more than doing. The world doesn't need you to fix it. It needs you to witness it clearly, without the filters of fear, without the story of separation. In that pure observation, healing happens not because you send light, but because your unclouded attention allows the field to collapse into its highest potential. That's the alchemy. Awareness itself is the catalyst. And yes, this is disorienting. Of course it is. You're dismantling a lifetime of assumptions. There will be moments when you question if anything is real, if your memories are solid, if other people exist independently, if the past is fixed. That's not breakdown. That's the necessary void between old and new. Like a snake shedding skin, you can't grow without first feeling exposed, vulnerable, unsure. But don't retreat to false certainty. Stay in the not knowing. Breathe into the uncertainty. Because on the other side isn't confusion, it's clarity. So profound it feels like coming home. You're not losing your mind. You're gaining the universe. And this isn't just happening to you. Across the planet, thousands are undergoing this same neural reset. Not because of a video, but because the field is ready. Rupert Sheldrake's morphic resonance explains it. As more minds align with quantum truth, the pattern strengthens, making it easier for the next person to integrate it. You're riding a wave of collective awakening, supported by every mystic who ever sat in silence, every physicist who ever stared into the equations and saw God, every ordinary soul who chose truth over comfort. Their courage built the bridge you're crossing now. So when the fear arises, and it will, don't fight it, thank it. It's showing you where your old world is dissolving. Then gently return to this truth. You are not separate. You are not small. You are the living interface between the infinite and the incarnate. Every breath you take is a silent act of creation. Every choice of attention is a vote for which world gets to exist. And right now, in this exact instant, the universe is holding its breath, waiting for your next look. Don't look for answers out there. The answer is the looking itself. Because if you're seeing this, you're not just part of the awakening. You're the reason it's possible. Reality isn't happening to you. It's happening through you, and that changes everything.